Hi, everyone. Today, I am so excited to be talking to author Kelly Simmons. And the book we're going to be talking about is called The Fifth of July, which came out in August. (laughs) But anyway, Kelly, I am so happy to talk to you about this book. I loved this book. Oh, thank you so much. You're so sweet. Oh, my goodness. I wish I could, like, (laughs) I was thinking right before I got it on the phone, I'm like, I, I listened to it and I read it on Kindle. Okay. Oh, so cool. I did not at the same time, I hope, because that would be confusing. <laughs> no, did they you? have whisper sync. Yes, I did. Oh my god! Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. So what yeah. you do is you listen, and then it, the, if you log on to your Kindle, it'll say um, on your audio, "You're this far ahead. You want to jump to this place, right?" Oh my goodness! So this is what I'm I do. So behind. I, what I do? I don't have a Kindle. <laughs> I okay, don't. I'm the only writer working in America who does not <laughs> read on Kindle. Seriously. Okay, so what I do is I listen in, like, this is my day. I have to go to the grocery store every day, okay? So I go, I put it on in the car, I get out of the car, and then when I'm standing in line at the grocery store, I can read it on my Kindle, and it tells me where I am from when I was listening in the car. Then I get back in the car, and then the audio jumps to where I was from where I'm standing in line at the grocery store, and that's how I live my day, basically. Oh, my God. Like I, this is like a life changer. Like I, I, like I feel like I'm like in a Judy Justin, you know, kind of situation now. Like my refrigerator is going to talk to me when I go downstairs. I, I am living like <laughs> I feel like such a luddite, but I didn't know that. That is so yeah. cool. and and it's uh, so funny because people will say to me like I, I get comments sometimes and they're like. Um, you know, from people that listen to my videos and they'll say, well, she didn't even read the whole book. And I'm like, I'm reading a book a day. Like, do you understand? Like, if I didn't have the audio hooked up. No, and, how could you do you it? Know, yeah. I'd have to just yeah. sit. I can't sit. I can't sit a whole day. Like, that's just not possible. So when I'm cooking well, you know, dinner, I just yeah. put the audio oh, on. Know. Oh, you that's know? so cool. I, you know, yeah. I don't listen to the audio books of my own books because I am – terrified of being massively disappointed so you know it's like going to the movies and seeing the adaptation of your book I would imagine right. I would be you know my 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 I'd, I'd cover my eyes I'd be like oh I don't know so okay um, so let me let me tell you about the audio which was so interesting because um what they did with your book is they got because your book is written with five to six right. different characters okay um they had different people doing each character oh, yeah yeah, no, I knew that. I got to approve them. I they they sent me them. Oh, I, I, okay. So I approved the actors. Yeah, which is so great because I work in advertising and I'm all about you know controlling things. So I was like, yes. Um, no, it so was that is cool Let me tell you, I could have like I was like sitting in on my couch and like instead of reading, I just put it on audio and then I crocheted because I was like, you know what? They're doing a better job. I want to hear them. Like, oh, that's <laughs> so nice. Good. I'm glad. I my my. My husband and um, uh, my daughter both love audiobooks, and they told me that 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 it was good and not to worry. So um, good. No, it was good, entertaining. Good, good. It was a whole different way of like reading your book because I felt like I was being like it was almost like it was being performed for me, you know, with right. different voices. You know, with it was first awesome. person monologues, right? Yes. Yeah, it, I think it was a good book for 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 audio, um, and and not all books are obviously. Um, some are better suited than others. So good. Yeah. Good. No, this book was – okay, so <laughs> I was so happy that we were going to get to talk about this book because I have never read a book with more tension. Okay, did you ever read Ann Tyler books? Oh, yeah. I loved Ann Tyler. I was obsessed with Oh, Anne my God. Tyler. You write like face. Ann Tyler. Okay. Oh, my you... God. <laughs> okay, I, I now love you, and I'm going to move to your neighborhood so we can be friends and, like, have coffee. <laughs> I, I couldn't describe it. I was trying to sit here and think. I'm like, wait, I've read this kind of book. I've read it. I know it. And then I was like, Ann Tyler. This reminds me of Ann Tyler because there's a, there's nothing going on, and then there's everything going on. Oh, like yeah. Like anyone that who's is never so read nice. Ann Tyler, like that is what I'd say about her books. There is right. this, this normal, quote, unquote, family living, and you think nothing's going on until you realize yep. there's everything going on in yep. the family. There's the iceberg, you know? the iceberg below the surface, for sure. Oh, you yep. captured that think. with these people. Like, I, I couldn't, you know, you know when there's, like, obvious tension in a book? This is so subtle, it actually drove, like, I was like, oh, my God, I'm like, I had to get up. I'm like, this is so subtle and yet so, like, 
driving me crazy. Like I oh, wanted to good. know what so it glad. was like. Oh, but you've got what, it. But you've what got happened? it. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the story it does have tension on several levels because there's the tension of what happened in the past, and then yeah. there's you know a lot of tension in in the in the you know in the front story as well about what's going on in the family, the family dynamics, and then the the island of Nantucket has some crimes happening too. So I think you are worried on several levels if you, oh. you know, if you allow and, yourself and, to be worried. <laughs> well, the, okay, because these chapters are short. That's another thing that's crazy. Um, is like because for me, I always am thinking, all right, I'll make, I'm going to read a chapter and then make dinner. Well, with short chapters, I'm like, oh, well, I can read five more minutes. Oh, I can read five more minutes <laughs> until I'm, you know, done. But, yes. but the way you ended the chapters with these different characters, it would be like, oh, and they're doing blah, 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 and then, bam, last sentence. And I'm like, what? And then I'm like, no, i got to read one more chapter. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I said, there's like something, go- nothing going on and then everything going on in this story. It's oh, that's absolutely so, crazy. So absolutely lovely crazy. to hear you to hear that you've got it because it, it does take some it does take some planning to do that. And um, oh, my first editor on my first book, uh, my first book, Sandy Still, the, my very first editor who I really didn't think liked me, she did say one thing you do really really well is you know exactly when to end the chapter. And I was like, well, thank you. You finally said something nice to me. I called her the dominatrix. We had such a hard time. Oh. editing that first book when I was first starting out. But um, I do think that I read a lot of mystery when I was young. I was addicted to mysteries, like really, really fast-paced stuff. And it has bled through my Ann Tyler love. Um, so yeah. that I think I have, I have both of those types of uh, I'm glad fantasy. you can relate because I was afraid, like, I was the only person. Uh, and I remember what back, you know, oh, my God, I'm 53. I don't know how long ago it was. I remember my first Ann Tyler book, and, and you're just reading it along thinking, oh, this is fun. Oh, this is fun. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I don't know. And that's how this started. It's like, oh, this is the accidental Oh, they're going tourist. on vacation. That, oh, this is the accidental tourist. That so how about the first. movie for that? Yes. Oh, how about my God. The I love William Hurt. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. He did so oh, that that's exactly what I was picturing. And it's like, yeah. oh, they're going to Nantucket. Oh, what a cute little family vacation. Oh, this will be a cute little, like, beach read or something, you know. And then yeah. all of a sudden, yeah. all this crazy stuff comes up. And, you know, and, uh, anyway. One of my so reviews, happy. <laughs> so one of my reviews on, it. oh, thank you. Uh, one of my review, reviews on book list called it, called it, like, a, a light beach read as comfortable as a worn in sofa. And I was like, you didn't read this carefully. You read the book. <laughs> you I mean, you I got to let you know this third chapter, and then you you know, there's no it way. Light. No, <laughs> no, because that's okay. First of all, do you have a brother? I do have a brother. <laughs> okay, because like, I have a brother, so yes. I do think that that helped. Because I the whole time I was like laughing at the interaction between the two of them. And I was like, yeah. he has to have a brother because yeah, in order for anybody to understand, and I, my brother's younger, he's 18 months younger. And um, to understand that dynamic of a yep. brother, sister, you know, yep. and I don't, I have six children. So I have four boys, oh goodness, two girls. And so there's not that same watching my children, you know, and they have different, of course, different relationships are all growing up and, you know, whatever. But I, I, it's so different when it's only you and him, like it was me and my brother, mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. it. And that dynamic, you got, you just nailed it. You nailed that. Oh, good, good. I'm glad. I have a lot of friends that only have one of each. It's very popular. It's you know, very popular. Our, <laughs> among our generation, they have <laughs> yeah. one of each. you got to have one of each, you know. Right. Um, I have three daughters, but I, my brother and I definitely had tension, and um, my husband's family has two boys and two girls, and I saw the same tension in their family, too, and, you know, I think that the whole novel, I think that all of Fifth of July is about, is really about small things that have huge consequences, so right. the brother and sister um, really have some very small things that happen that they haven't forgiven each other for. So, um, and I think that that's classic of siblings because small things seem even larger when you're a child, right? Yeah. So they wound you, they wound you deeper and then you carry it, carry it around with you and then you never even find out the truth. So, um, so anyway, that's what I had in mind. 
Okay. Yeah, and it, it made me it made me really you know my my brother lives in Florida, and uh, we talk you know twice a month maybe three times a month depending on what's going on in our lives you know we we check in but it's a relationship that I don't have to talk to him a lot but like if I ever needed him like he'd be my first phone right. call right you know like I don't it, we don't need to talk all the time you know our right. lives aren't like that but. It's right. definite, like, you know, if you ever needed something, it's, like, your first phone call. But right. I, I did right. love, like, how when it was ending, and I give no spoilers because you have to take this <laughs> ride. You just have to. But I love that when you said that about little things because I, I, it brought up, I remember my mom was dying, okay, and my, mom, and my brother and I were taking care of her, and we had to take her to the emergency room one time, and I had to go fill out paperwork. And I came back, and she was all by herself in this wheelchair, right? And I was like, where did this go, right? And your so brother's eating the pizza, situated. right? <laughs> yeah, I get her situated, and I go walking around, and he went to go smoke a cigarette outside. I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> I gave me one job. Me. I said, yeah, one job. You just had to sit with her on the by the wheelchair. Like, you didn't even have to do anything. But he left her in the middle of the emergency room with unattended. Oh, my gosh. Okay. That's- that's a great. That would have worked really well, actually, in this book because I know. Uh, That's what I it's kept... such a it's such a sandwich generation story. Really, it's about right. caring for caring for aging parents, dealing with raising your own, your own. teenagers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's we've all we've all been there, and it's it's rough. You you've got you get it from all sides. Yeah, and oh kind of goodness. covering up, you know, like he, you know, when I and when I found him, and he was like, I just need you to smoke a cigarette. I'm like, whatever, and I went back in, and that, and it's like. I just took care of it, and you just kind of, like, you forgive them for their inadequacies very easily. You know, I could have just pitched a big fit at that moment. But, no, you just, like, all right, he couldn't deal. I get it. All right, I'll just go deal. He can still remember it, right? Still remember it. (laughs) But I still remember that time you left, Mom. (laughs) If I were to say that to him, he'd be like, I don't even remember. I don't know what you're talking about. Of course not. And that was the same in the the 5th of July. Tom. Does not even remember really. Um, yep. Just as you know, the same with her father. Th- these things don't don't register the same way for everybody. They register more fully uh, with different people. Just the same way that childhood memories. You know, my brother and my sister and I have completely different memories of the same event. And that, oh. that that takes place in the novel as well. Well, I fear for my children because, you know, there's age differences. And, and I just know what, like, even with my brother Wayne, and we sit there and say, you know, remember this? No. And sometimes they'll say to me, how are we only 18 months apart and had such a different life? I'm like, I don't know. You weren't paying attention. That's how. <laughs> so true. So, women yeah. are paying attention, and women writers pay a lot of attention. You talk to any female writer, and they really had a writer's childhood where they were paying attention. Yeah, I mean, yes. Yeah, so I, I mean, I wish. I, what I picture is someday I'm going to be on a beach and I'm not going to have to read any books because I'll be on vacation, and then I'm going to read the other ones of your books. That, that's my goal is to read your other oh, you're books. You're so sweet. You're so sweet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, they do have some similar qualities for sure. Um, so if you, you know, if you like family, you know, family drama, and you like tension, and uh, you like Ann Tyler, I think you'll like the other books. Trouble right, with Tyler. I should be so lucky. Honestly, <laughs> I should be that lucky. But, um, well, I think you did. But okay, where did you get? Um, so I, you know, we're we're in Pennsylvania. For everybody listening, we're yeah. both in, on the east coast of Pennsylvania. Um, do, have you been to Nantucket? Yes, my husband's uh, family has been going there since the 1930s. So his 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 grandmother started you know, started the truck. I think they lived in New York then. Um, mm-hmm. And then, um, and it was not easy to get to Nantucket um, in those years. There was right. um, quite, quite, quite the drama, no high speed ferries. Um, and then it's just a family tradition. They have um, a shared house that, you know, a lot of people share a big house. that's very similar to the house in the 5th of July. So I was inspired by the house and by a lot of years of going up for a couple weeks, in some cases the whole summer, if I had, you know, if I had like a writing kind of retreat that I could plan for myself. Um, I was lucky enough to stay in the house for two full summers to get a book done. And um, I didn't really, really, it's not like I set out to write a book that was set on Nantucket, but over time, 
it's a very interesting place. It's a fascinating place. It's very beautiful, but it's also very exclusive in some, some ways, and it's very, it's almost designed to keep people out. It's far away. It's difficult to get to, you know, the weather, you know, fogs you in and you can't even get there, and it's hard to find hotel reservations. Things are expensive if you don't, you know, have a friend that has a house or it's just, it's a weird place and it's, um, it's weirdnesses became very apparent to me over time as I watched it change. And I watched, you know, these well, super wealthy, you know, kind of wall street money people moving, moving there. Like the Hamptons are very crowded. There are a lot of other beautiful places that are very crowded and sooner or later people start going further away for their vacations on the East coast. Right. Right. Um, so in Nantucket is relatively unpopulated compared to say the Hamptons or the Jersey right. shore, which is so crowded and the traffic is so, so overbearing. Um, Nantucket is not, not the same way because it's further away, but um, watching the changes and the mega wealth and the way that uh, these beautiful spaces were being, um, being treated differently and the resentment of people, that's that's a big part of the book is this whole right. um, change, and um, you know it could be construed as oh you know the pro- the first world problems of a bunch of wealthy white people, <laughs> but that's part of what's fascinating about it is because they really felt like these were the biggest problems in the world to them. Um, yes, yes. And in and fact, I- there are much worse problems. There are there are terrible terrible crimes, you know, and terrible secrets from the past that are far more important than an obstructed uh, view from your perfect real estate, whereas that's what they're fighting about. So anyway, blah, blah, blah. But um, it took me a long time to realize that there was an interesting um, sociological thing happening on this tiny little beautiful place, and I suddenly wanted to write about it. So, um, Well, I have to say that I I was ashamed to say that I have – I had to look it up on the map today because we always go to Florida, and even yeah. growing up, everybody, you know, in my family, we go to Florida. Um, the Jersey Shore didn't even come into play until right. older. Everybody and, has their different places. Yes, everybody does. And, you know, now that I've been to Long Island and, you know, the Hamptons and different places like that to just see them, <laughs> not, to, not to live there, but no, um, no. I was my like, gosh. where is Nantucket? Well, when I looked it up, I'm like, Oh, that is way out further off the shore than I imagined it. No wonder yep. that yep. you know back in the day that that ferry, you know, that was that was not easy to get to. You know, that would be no. very difficult. And no wonder, you know, the I understood the book a little bit better when I saw the geography of where it actually is. You know, and then Martha's so. Vineyard, you know, yeah, which is its you know sister island, is right. so much closer, so much yeah. easier, and so, so much, much larger. Easier. Yeah, it's more affordable. Mm-hmm. There's there's all kinds of differences between the two. Um, it just um, it's an interest. It's a beautiful place and an interesting place. And um, I think that um, you know I wanted to take some interesting characters and put them there and and tell their story. So um, I've written a lot about uh, Philadelphia's main line area. A lot of my other books are set there. Mm. Um, it's also a fascinating place to me. Um, I'm yes. from Chicago, so I'm an outsider completely. Oh, like, nice. Who are these people? I don't even understand <laughs> the East Coast on some level. So, um, I love Chicago. Fascinates me. Well, I have a Midwestern sensibility. You know, I'm kind of like, ooh, this is not, this is not the same. So, <laughs> well, what I liked in the book is about how I felt like um, the parents especially from when I grew up, I mean, I, I have to say, I probably was a little bit more hands-on parent than my, well, I know I was, than my parents were. And and then you see it to the utmost degree in, you know, in this family of how they oh, treat yeah. their, their yeah. children like they're, you know, two when they're, you know, not not just adults, but teenagers. And, you know, it's just, it's kind of funny. I like this. Right. Well, you know, I mean, there is a kind of, um, old school hands off, you know, children run wild and come home for dinner mentality that I see, you know, in my generation, you know, I was kind of raised that way. Yeah, um, me and too. then, and yet I raised my kids in a much more, I'm not going to say I'm a helicopter parent, but I was very involved. Right. Um, 
So I definitely see that split, you know, across most of America. But um, yeah. it really um, is a huge difference. And it's part of the tension in the family. The yes, it's family, part of it. For yes, sure. it kind of builds on that, on that tension. Yep. You, you you're know. babying her. You're not giving her enough freedom. Mm-hmm. But there's a rapist on the loose. You know, <laughs> <Hello>. <laughs> I know. I no big when, deal. When the, when the mom was saying that with Caroline, but there's a rapist out there. And I was like, there's rapists everywhere. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So You're exaggerating. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny. But it added to her character a lot. I mean, it said yeah. so much about who she was, you know. So I yeah. liked it. Totally. But, oh, good. Good. So, okay. So what are you doing next? Well, I'm finishing up a novel that's about um, it's about a '60s radical, you know, who's who's been underground all this time, like the last of the female uh, members of the Weathermen, um, who uh, who is about to get caught and has to go on the run with her teenage daughter. Um, Ooh. Yeah, and then her daughter makes her forces her, you know, I'm going to tell where you are unless you take me to see my, the, my family that you left. So it, it's kind of a road trip and it's kind of crazy. And um, anyway, it's been very fun. It's set in California, partly in California and partly um, in, in the far out suburbs of Philadelphia. And um, it's been fun, really fun to, and to especially it's write a character. completely different, you know? Yeah, completely different. But um, I had to go back, you know, I think, oh, my God, I thought I remembered some of the 60s from my childhood. But then I go back into the research and I'm like, you knew nothing. You knew nothing that you didn't see in Life magazine. You are like, I had to learn all the history and, um, you know, about the Vietnam War and how, you know, college students and high school students even really felt that way. And I had to go back and do a ton of research on that. And um Anyway, it, it, it was really fun, and um, and then after that, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to write. I'm only is this one in book uh, is it, What stage are you in with that book? Is it like to the it's editor? About to, it's about to go to the agent and the editor. So oh, um, good. Yeah, good. So, so maybe next year. Uh, yeah, next year. Hopefully, uh, maybe February next year would be my hope. Oh, great. Yeah, great. Yeah. Did Did you see? Um, I don't know how much you're on Facebook or you know. I mean, I have to be on there, right? Okay, I have to be. And, um, and you brought up the '60s. Do you see how everybody's doing that Nano Rimo, like you know, oh, that yeah, contest? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, one of my authors was like, "You really should do it, you know, just for fun." And I was thinking, "Well, you know what? Because both my parents are gone, and my children always complain that they just never knew them, right? Because my parents were young; they had me young. Yeah. And, and so I was like, you know what? You know, because it doesn't matter. I'm not a writer, but I could write their history and then just yep. give it to them. You know, print, put it on yep. a, you know, put it in a, yep. in a folder. Yep. Tell them where it is, right? So I start writing about because I was born in '64. Okay, so I did the same thing. I thought I knew about the '60s. Like I thought I, I had good <laughs> memory of the '60s. And then as I'm writing this from their, pers- I was doing it from their perspective. And so I started looking up, and I'm like, wow, I did not realize. I, first of all, I didn't even realize the slang of the 60s. But I really oh, like, right, right. I started learning a lot about the 60s when I was doing the research of how, you know, what they were doing in their, you know, what they were doing during that time. And Oh, yeah. yeah. So some of I it has really gone. That. <laughs> so, you know, some of it has, has entered the consciousness forever, you know. I yeah. mean, people still say cool all the time. Oh, cool. I mean, that's right. here to stay. Right. That is here to stay. And then, like, groovy. Groovy, not so much. But um, <laughs> Na- NaNoWriMo, is a, NaNoWriMo is a great kick in the ass for a lot of for a lot of writers, for sure. Oh, it's a great concept. Yeah. But I really, I really get, like, it's humbling because, you know, the one author friend, she was like, you only have to do 50,000 words in 30 days. And I'm like, I can do that. And then I'm like, on the 7th, like, it's November 7th. And I'm like, I'm not at 10,000 yet. Wait a second. It's very this is hard. not that I, easy. I, I did it. I, I've done it twice. I've done it twice. And it's, I find the schedule very hard. I just don't, you know, when you have kids and you have a job, it's, it's really hard to find the, the, that time. Yeah. Um, well, it gave me a different, you know, in case anybody doesn't understand word count and how important that is for authors and why it takes, you know, and that's not even counting edits and every. This is just like straight writing, okay? Yep, and yep. fifty thousand words is not a long book, so no. You know, <laughs> <laughs> 
in this game, and I was like, oh, you know, I bow down to you guys because there's just I didn't know until I actually sat there and had to do it. You know, yeah. mine was just yeah. for fun, but. Yeah, it's it's not as easy as it's not as easy as it looks. So no, <laughs> I get it now. no, but there's great <laughs> software now that helps you along the way, and you know you can set up your goals and yeah. kind of rewards you when you when you hit your goals, which is great. It's like a little have yeah. loading bell that goes off. Yay! Yeah, I like was using Story You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But People, I, I use Story it's, it's it's great. So well, anyway, well, I'm so happy that I met you, and and please, I'd love to talk again. I mean, when the next book comes out, oh, just let me so know, sweet. and that would you know, be great. I'm happy, happy to do it. We live so close, and you know, anytime. Yeah. So I, 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 in small I, I can't, I can't suggest. I know, I can't suggest this book enough. I, I will have all of um, her links underneath this video. And um, thank you so much, Kelly. It was so much fun thank talking you to so you. Thank you so much. It's great talking to you.